In this lesson, we're going to look at continuous growth and decay applications. So there's really uh, one major formula, but we're going to look at it in two different ways. Um, so the formula that, that you're going to use will look like this. So it'll be A of T will equal A times E to the RT. So remember, E is an irrational number. So remember, E is approximately equal to 2.718. So, so that's, uh, so remember in previous um, lessons, you used E for when you saw the word continuous investing. Um, so remember the continuously. So if it says that, if it uses the word continuous growth like this right here, then you're going to use E. All right, so remember E is an irrational number that's approximately equal to 2.718. But you know it's an irrational number. Remember, E, to get E, make sure you know where it is in your calculator. For me, you can't see it very well. I'm going to try and bring it up a little bit more. But you see right here where it says LN, right above LN is that button. You can't see it, but it says E to the X. All right, so know, make sure you know how to get to it because that's going to be important um, when doing these problems is to know how to use your calculator for these problems. Okay. So here's the formula. It always looks like this. A of t, where t is the time. So notice t is time here. That, that's going to be um, uh, your, your variable that we'll be looking at. So A of t is equal to A times e to the rt. So A is the initial amount. Um, R is the continuous growth rate per unit of time and t is the the time okay so when we talk about and, and i'll come back to this right here but when we talk about um, let's say money instead of using instead of using the letter a we're going to use the letter p where p stands for the principal so the principal meaning the um, initial amount invested everything else basically stays the same in terms of words so r would be the interest rate and T would be the period or the, the term of the investment. But everything, everything here and here basically means the same thing. A and P means the initial amount. But in business, we talk about the word principal. So sometimes you'll see that word instead um, of just the word amount and amount. So it'll be the word principal. Okay. One thing you got to remember, though, is that we talk about growth and decay. So if you're talking about growth, when you talk about growth, then R will be positive, okay? So R is positive when, when you're looking at something that represents continuous growth. If, you look, if you're told um, that it is a K, then R will be negative. So if in the problem it says continuously decay, make sure that R is negative. If it's continuous growth, make sure that R is positive. And you're going to see this as we go through the process. Okay? All right, so let's, let's start looking at some problems just to see how this works. Okay, so number one, a person invested $2,000 in an account earning a nominal 12% per year compounded continuously. So there's that word continuous. So whenever you see the word continuous, you're going to use um, E, for your base, okay? So your base will be E. So, so since um, I see the word continuous, I know I'm going to use A of T will equal, and since I'm dealing with money here, I'm going to call it P. P times E to the RT, okay? All right, so, uh, oh, and by the way, nominal means the interest rate um, without taking uh, inflation into account. So um, that's all that means. So What's the interest rate without even looking at inflation, without taking inflation into, into account? Okay, so I mean by nominal. Um, but it doesn't matter. This word could have, be, could have been left out. The, this 12% is the one that's important, 12% per year. Okay, all right. So, um, so I know the formula. The formula is A um, of T will equal P times E to the RT, right? And so the principal is 2,000. So there's your P right here. So let's denote that as my P. And then the 12% will be the rate right here, 12%. But remember, 
Um, that's important to remember now. So when writing the rate, it's got to be written as a decimal. So 12% is 0 0.12. Okay, so make sure, make sure you remember to change the um, percent to a decimal. That's important. And then at the end of two years, that will be your time. Okay, so time, see where it says per year? So make sure your time's in years. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute. So at the end of two years, so A of T, A, A of um, uh, two. So at the end, what will be, how much will be the account at the end of two years? So A is the amount, how much you'll have at the end of two years is equal to the principal, which is 2,000 times E. And then the numerator, I'm sorry, in the exponent, you're going to have 0 0.12 times, and then the time is two. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our calculator. Now, it is very important, it is very important on your calculator when you're taking this exponent. When you're looking at this exponent, the way I would do this, because that exponent would be important here, because um, that's a product. So the way I would do this in a calculator is I would say 200 times E, and then I would put parentheses 0 0.12 times 2. That's the way I would do that on my calculator. So let's look at how to do this. So make sure you get that same answer. So you'd say, um, I'm sorry, it's not 200, it's 2,000. 2,000, 2,000. So you'd say 2,000. Let me go ahead and get the glare out of the way. 2,000, just like this, times E. So you're going to press, um, to get to my E, you're going to say second LN, see E. Notice you put parentheses there. And then you're going to say 0 0.12 times 2, okay? close the parentheses, and then press equal, and then that's what you have. All right, now they didn't tell you how to round off, so let's go ahead and round off to the nearest cent, to the nearest cent. So the nearest cent, let me go ahead and round, write, write this, um, round to the nearest cent. Okay, so the nearest cent, remember what the nearest cent means? The nearest cent means, means uh, like, 46 cents, 38 cents, so the nearest hundreds, okay? Nearest hundreds. All right, so look at what we have. So let me go ahead and write this down. So we have this. We have this is approximately equal to, I'm going to go ahead and write all those digits, 2542.498301. It continues on. So the nearest cent is this, the hundreds place right here. Now remember to rounding off, since that's Five or bigger, the thousands place, that's an eight. We add one to the nine, but nine plus one is 10, so this actually becomes 50 cents. So the answer, the answer will be um, $2,542.50. So make sure you know how to round off correctly, okay? All right, so that's number one. So it's not that difficult, right? Not that difficult at all. All right, let's look at number two. So number two, I'm going to take these pages out of the way. So number two, it says a radioactive element decays at a continuous rate. So notice the word continuous. Since I'm using continuous, I'm going to use this formula. A of T equals A times uh, E to the RT. Okay. Uh, notice, though, that this A is capitalized, this A is not. So this uh, lowercase A is the initial amount, and then capital A is the amount you have at the end of that time period. All right, so um, my initial amount is uh, 100. So that's the initial amount. So, so this is your A right here. Um, the rate, the time, let's do the time. The time is 14 days, so there's my time. And then the rate, that's 14.6% per day, right? So we're going to convert that to a uh, to a decimal. So 14.6% means 0.146. Don't forget to do that. Convert that to a decimal. And so therefore, uh, the amount after four days will equal the original amount, which was 100 milligrams, times E. And in my numerator, I'm going to have 0.146 times the time, which is 4. And then let's go ahead and approximate that. So let's see, we get 100. Use our calculator now. So make sure you know how to use your calculator. So we get the glare out of the way. So here we go. 
100 times E, so second um, E, notice it puts parentheses, you can say 0.146 times 4, close the parentheses, press equal, and I get this. Now, it didn't indicate how to round off, so let's go ahead here and round to the nearest tenth. So round to the nearest tenth. Okay, nearest tenth. And so the nearest tenth then would be 179.3, right? 179.3. So, um, and then that'll be milligrams. So at the end of four days, um, uh, oops, I'm so sorry, I messed that up. Uh, forgot to mention this, it's a decay, right? Decay, oops, I messed that up. And I know I messed that up because I knew it was supposed to decrease and it increased, see that? So that's one way to, that's one way to make sure that, that you don't mess up is to look at what you started out with and look at what you ended up with. So I went from 100 to 179, so that would be a growth, wouldn't it? But that's a decay, so this element's decaying. So what did I forget to do? I forgot to do this right here. If it's a decay, R must be negative. So what did I forget to do? I forget to make this exponent negative right here, okay? So the rate is 14.6% uh, per day, but that's a decay. So when you come here, make sure you make that negative. Okay, so make sure R must be negative. All right, so, um, so be very careful. And, and I knew I made an error right away when I realized it had increased. It's supposed to decrease. All right, so let's go back and fix this. Um, okay, so we have 100. All right, so 100 times um, E. Uh, here we go. And then negative, negative. There's the, make sure you press the negative button, not the subtraction, but the negative button. So negative 0.1, oops, 0.146 times 4, close the parentheses, and then press equal, and now look what you get. So 55.8, so 55.8, right? So it's approximately equal to 55.8 milligrams. So um, you went from 100 milligrams to 55.8 milligrams. All right, so so be careful. Um, always, always, uh, uh, when you're dealing with with continuous, um, whenever you're dealing with this formula, make sure you look at R, whether it's a positive or a negative. So since this is the word decay, right here, since this is the word decay, R is negative. So keep that in mind. Okay? Keep that in mind. All right. So that's number two. Let's look at number three. So number three, we have a person invested $30,000 at a nominal interest rate. So remember, nominal means the rate without taking... Uh, inflation into account. So $30,000 a nominal interest rate of 8% per year compounded continuously. What will be the value of the investment in 20 years? So since we're talking about money, I'm going to use this formula uh, where I use P instead. And uh, um, so I don't have to worry about R, that, that growth of decay here because I know that this is a growth, right? Because you're dealing with money and the interest rate's 8%. Um, and so, so you're investing money into an account that's paying 8% per year. So um, um, I know R is going to be positive here. So let's see. So this is the principal, right? $30,000. That's your initial amount. This is your rate right here. So that's 0 0.08. So remember, you must change that to a decimal. Uh, it's being compounded continuously. So I know I had to use that E right here. And then my time is 20 years. Okay. And so let's see what we get. So at the end of 20 years, how much money will be in that account? So A of 20 will equal $30,000 um, times E. And in parentheses, so maybe you can put this in, in your calculator. So my rate is 0.08. I'm going to multiply that by 20 and then close the parentheses. All right. And then let's round to the nearest dollar this time. Round to the nearest dollar nearest dollar. So let's go ahead and round to the nearest dollar. All right, so 30,000, 30,000 times E, all right, raised to the 0 0.08 times 20, close the parentheses, just like this, okay, close the parentheses, and then press equal, 
and you get this. So let me go ahead and write out those digits. So, so 148590.9727 and so on. All right. So to the nearest dollar, uh, to the nearest dollar. So remember, to the nearest dollar means means um, no no uh, no cents. Okay. So so you got to look at your tenths at your uh, tenths place right here nine. Since that's uh, five or bigger, you're going to add one to the whole number part to the ones place. So to the ones place, that's a zero. So my answer is going to be one four eight five nine one. And so. So um, in 20 years, just thirty thousand dollars will increase to to one hundred forty eight thousand five hundred ninety one dollars. All right. So there's the answer. Okay, number four, your car is valued at twenty eight thousand dollars in the year 2018. If it continuously depreciates. So remember that depreciating. So that means R is negative. R is negative. If it continuously depreciates. Uh, in value by 7% per year, how much will, will it be worth in 2023? And then round your answer to the nearest dollar. So, so this is the initial amount right here. So that's going to be, um, uh, let's, let's call that um, A. So that's A, the initial amount. All right, now be careful with the time. It doesn't come out and specifically state the time, but you do know that it went from 2018 to 2023. So the time will be 2023 minus 2018. So how many years is that? So that is what, five years? So the time is five years, right? That's your time. All right, and then R here would be 0 0.07. So make sure you always write the rate as a decimal. All right, so we get A at the end of five years. Uh, so the amount at the end of five years will be $28,000 times E all raised. Now remember it's depreciating, so make sure R is negative. So it'll be a negative 0 0.07. Oops, 0, 07, 0, 07 times um, 5. So let's use a calculator now. So $28,000 times um, E raised to the negative 0 0.07 times 5. Press equal of percent up uh, with the uh, parentheses. And then press equal, and you get this number. Now to the nearest dollar, let me go ahead and write out what I see. 19731.26651, and so on. All right, so to the nearest dollar, remember to the nearest dollar means you got to round off to the ones place. So you got to look at the tenths. Since that's less than five, then this stays a one. So the answer will be $19,731. So in five years, your car will be worth that amount, $19,731. All right, so that's number four. All right, let's so number five. So number five, you have, you deposit $3,000 into a bank that pays 3.5 continuous interest. What is the balance after three years? And then round your answer to the nearest cent. All right, so we know that this is the initial amount, so it'll be P. So I'm going to use A of T equals P times E to the RT. I know I have to use E because of the word continuous. So what is the balance after three years? So there's my time. Um, the rate is as a decimal is 0 0.035. Remember how to change a percent to a decimal. Move the decimal point two places to the left. And then let's substitute into the formula. So, at the, so the amount at the end of um, three years will equal... The initial amount, which is 3,000, times E, in parentheses, the rate, which is 0 0.035, times uh, the time, which is 3. All right, now let's use our calculator. And so we get 3,000, so 3,000, times uh, E, and then our exponent, 0 0.035, times 3, close the parentheses, and then press equal. And you get this. Um, and then to the nearest cent is what they want. So we're going to write out what we see. So this is what I see. Uh, 0 0.131831. All right, so remember the nearest cent means actually the um, hundreds place. So we got to look at the thousands place. Since this is a one, five or less, I'm sorry, less than five, then this stays three. So the answer, um, 
So we uh, 3,332, $3,332.13. All right. Number six. So um, a building built for, uh, that should be the word built. A building was built for $300,000 and it depreciates continuously. So there's a word continuous. So I, I know I have to use that E. So I know I have to use A of T equals um, uh, um, A times E to the RT, right? Okay, so the initial amount is 300000 So there's there's your, your A right here, or your P does not matter. But I do know it depreciates, correct? It depreciates, so I know that R is negative. And then here's my rate. So the rate is 0 0.09 as a decimal, 9%. Move the decimal with two places to the left. And then what's the value after nine years? That is my time. So after nine years, the amount after nine years will be uh, 300,000 times E in parentheses. Um, the rate is negative 0 0.09, negative point, uh, 0 0.09 times the time, which is nine. Close the parentheses, now use your calculator. So your calculator, you're going to have 300,000, let's see, 300,000 times second E, and then negative 0 0.09 times 9, close the parentheses, press equal, and you get this, 1334574199. and so on. Um, it doesn't say how to approximate, so let's this time um, round to the nearest dollar. To the nearest dollar. Okay, so the nearest dollar, remember, means the ones place. So you gotta look at the tenths place. So that since this is less than five, the seven stays seven. So the answer will be um, one, three, three, four, five, seven. All right, so $133,457. So you know it's got to be smaller, right? So always make sure you look at that word, depreciates. So this better be smaller than what you started out with. All right, that was number six. All right, number seven. So number seven, in 2015, the club membership was 1,500 members. With an annual growth um, of approximately 6%, compounded continuously. So here's that word, continuously, so I know I am going to be using this formula with the E in it, okay? Um, what will be the membership in 2025? All right, so here's your A, your initial amount. Um, uh, the annual growth is 6%, so 6% 6 is 0 .06 as a um, as a decimal. You must always write as a decimal. And then you gotta find your time. So the time, remember you went from 2015 to 2025. So 2025 subtract 2015 is 10 years, right? So your time is 10 years. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute. So um, remember, um, it's a growth, right? So since that's a growth, it's gonna, it's gonna say R is positive. Since that's a growth, R is positive. All right, so the end of 10 years, we get 1500 times E, and uh, the exponents in parentheses will be the rate which is 0 0.06 times the time, which is 10 years, close the parentheses, and then use your calculator. All right, and so 1500, 1500 times E, so second E to get to that function E, uh, in parentheses, you're gonna say 0 0.06 times 10, close the parentheses and press equal, and you get this decimal. All right, so I'm gonna approximate this, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, so we get this and so on. All right. Now we're talking about people, right? So when we talk about people, notice it didn't tell you how to round off. It expects you to know that since you're talking about a person, you're going to round off to the nearest whole number. So since we are talking about a person, since we are, um, since we are um, uh, um, including people, I should say, or talking about a person, um, use whole number. Use a whole number. All right, so that means the uh, nearest whole person. So that so we have to round off to the um, to the ones place. So we got to look at the tenths since that 
one is less than five to three stays three. So the answer will be 2,733 people. So in 2025, this is how many members um, you're expected to have if it continues at 6% compounded continuously. Now before I go on, there's one thing I forgot to mention, the word annum. Annum, by the way, so when you see the word per annum, it just means per year. So annum in business means per year. That's all that means. Okay? Annum in business means per year. Okay, and then finally the last one, let's look at one more. Um, a radioactive substance, it has a continuous decay. So here's the word decay. So remember R is negative. R is negative. And here's your rate. Now notice your rate's already at a at a decimal. See that? So it's not listed as a percent, so it's already at a decimal. So as a percent, that would be 8.2%. So this just to let you know. So remember how to convert how to convert um, decimal to a percent, you move the decimal point two places to the right. So 8.2%. Um, but it's already listed as a decimal, so remember that's your rate right here. Um, how many grams of a 200 uh, gram sample will remain radioactive after four hours? So there's your time, there is your initial amount, A, and then it says round the nearest tenth of a gram. Okay, so, um, so we can use the formula A of T equals A times E to the RT. So it uses the word continuous. So I know I have to use uh, the um, irrational number E. So I get A at the end of four hours is going to be equal to um, the initial amount, which is 200, times E in parentheses. The exponent is going to be 0 0.082. Um, and oh, it's a decay, right? So it's negative 0 0.082. Always look at that. It's easy to forget that decay is negative. Uh, decay, the rate is negative, so it's always a good idea to write the word negative right here, R is negative. Um, or you can actually do this, you could say R is negative 0 0.082, so that way you don't forget. Okay, um, so negative um, 0 .0, 0 0.082 times the time, which is four hours, and let's approximate this. So let's see what we get. So we get 200 times uh, E raised to the negative 0 0.082 times 4, close the parentheses, press equal, and here's what I have so far, 144.0726039, and so on. But remember, it says round nearest tenth, right? So here's the tenth right here. I want to round here. So since, since um, that's the tenths place, I've got to look at the hundreds place. Since seven is five or bigger, I've got to add one to the tenths place. So the answer will be 144.1 grams. All right. So uh, you start out with 200. At the end of four hours, you're going to have 144.1 grams left. All right. So that, I believe, um, is our lesson on continuous growth and decay applications.